Okay, a comment going back here. It looks like a helpful comment, a very helpful comment uh, for what we were talking about a moment ago on the indicators from CanSlim, uh, the buying indicators of the market sentiment tool. Um, this is, uh, I apologize, David. David says, um, I view most chart patterns like a Warshak test. There is no right answer, which implies that all answers are wrong. I agree with you. Some people um, say that it's kind of like voodoo, that, that people who say they have an 85% success rate by looking at stock charts, it's more voodoo and art than it is actual realization of what you look for in a common position, meaning that I can have three stocks that specifically match what I'd want to see for a growth stock in a 20 to 30 day period, whether I'm using RSI, MACD, Bollinger Bands, EMAs, SMAs, um, distribution levels, a Williams percent R, what have you. Okay, I can have three stocks that match that. In the first 10 days, one stock could be up 8%, one stock could be down 8%, and one stock could be down 0.5% or up 0.5%. Or all three could be, the next cycle, all three could be up 7%. And that's where David's coming from. And he continues on and says, does power options try to recognize chart patterns? Uh, just curious, I assume the answer is no, but I once saw a product that claimed to recognize flag patterns. Um, okay, and then he goes on to say, I appreciate the Friday webinars. Thanks for your time. I like the radioactive blueprint. Um, I'm, just, I'm just scrolling through this as best I can here. Excellent, David. I like the radioactive blueprint and uh, enjoyed power options when I had it. And we have more time, you'll jump back in, okay? All right, so great, fantastic. And uh, Nancy, I won't announce that here, but I see uh, your follow-up comment there, and I'll I'll tr I'll take care of that best I can. All right, I'll let you get into that group as quick as I can. All right. So David, do these searches? Does Power Options attempt to recognize chart patterns? And a lot of strategies, yes. Specifically. Um, for certain strategies and specifically for what we want to see. For example, you heard me talk about it, my knowledge of bull put credit spreads, all the testing that I've done, everything that we've put together after four, three, four, five years of trading, the criteria that I found works best for me in trading and in all forms of historical testing, which I can do faster than you know trying to trade a lot, but I have been trading most of these, is this weekly bull put search. Okay, now this has just been done after different tests that Ernie did, and we found certain things about the time frame and the strike difference, and then I went back in and continued that pattern to saw the same thing, but I also found that there's certain stock criteria that work best over time, okay? And a couple of these are pretty simple, but they are looking for stock patterns. I am looking for stocks in an uptrend, and I'm looking basically for stocks that have to be above, where the MACD is going above the, the EMA9 signal by at least three days or more. That doesn't sound too complex, but in this case, we found that that works best for underlying bull puts. And of course, as always, because it's a strategy where you could lose 100% in a wild swing, we are avoiding earnings between now and expiration. And also just avoiding the counter and two times and three times ETFs. It's more related to the structure, but by the way, something that you'll see that's available in that bull put credit spread product it's just taking the preferred criteria that have worked for years and applying it with no stock criteria this could actually end up over one year it ended up at a 27 percent loss while using the stock criteria took all of the trades over the course of the year to about a 15 percent return and that doesn't sound too great but you'll see why in the product. It's not 15% of what you invested, it's 15% of the total portfolio because you should only be investing 15% into bull put credit spreads, bear call credit spreads as well. Anything that you can lose 100% on, you shouldn't really be risking more than 10 to 20% of your total portfolio. Okay, so th that's one answer, David. Now, if I take long calls, Ernie's testing that he did over years in time showed that a better way to approach long calls with continued success over different market cycles, bullish, bearish, and more, was to actually look at Bollinger Band highs, stocks in an uptrend near Bollinger Band ranges that are showing at or near a breakout. What do you typically see after a Bollinger Band breakout? Well, in true Bollinger Band breakout, what you typically see is 
the stock has bounced up, you know, above the upper Bollinger Band, and then it's closed the next day and maybe open the next day above it. That's a true breakout. When you start to see a pullback, and then you start to see it move back up. So this is what he's kind of looking for here, getting into these positions here on the rise, looking maybe for the dip there to add more and then follow up as well. So that's looking for a specific type of chart pattern also. Am I looking for things that you mentioned? Am I putting into power options to look for a, a cup and handle, a, a dead cat bounce, for example, or a, a double bounce? No. We're looking more for trend patterns that match the strategy after years and years of testing for what's worked in the specific strategies. In the married put search, what's worked for us best and the radioactive default screens, we are looking for stocks above a 50-day moving average, but there it's more about good sized stocks and management fundamentals than it is the technicals because this is more of a long-term growth position. Right? We want stocks that have shown good management, good reflection of quality earnings, growth in earnings, maybe growth in dividend, things of that nature, rather than the technicals. Yes, I want a stock to be moving in an uptrend, but because this is really the most conservative strategy you can do with options, we're not including synthetics, doing a synthetic Mary put we talked about a couple weeks ago and things of that nature, because you can control risk to single digits. And this doesn't mean that this is only 6.3% of your portfolio. It's 6.3% of what you invest in the position. Oh, Ally is up today. Hmm, that's one I'm still considering. As you probably heard me say too, I'm just going to open it on Monday. I just have to. I've been saying it for so long. I just have to open it on Monday. Uh, if I have the money, I'll do Dollar General too. Uh, sorry, in any case. So it depends on the strategy of what we're looking for. So the answer is yes, I'm look, we look for trends. Ernie and I test the trends. We run through different testing cycles in the various strategies to see what works best long-term in different markets. But at the same time, we're not looking for that specific pattern. Um, we did have uh, sort of some discussion. Um, you might have heard of them. They have some very powerful tools, and they're excellent, excellent people. Great conversations with these guys. Um, Chaken Analytics. I did a couple webinars with them a couple years ago, and we were trying to figure out a way uh, where we could put them together and have some of the shaken in here, uh, shaken um, things in here as well. Uh, so we'll do that also. Um, we've done that in the past to try to get that going also. Uh, but um, it's not looking for the specific chart patterns, but we are looking for the trends that might equate to the pattern as well. I got to scroll back up now for Chuck. All right, Chuck's question says the two sources searches, excuse me, that you mentioned, bull put credit and bear call credit that you have back tested, where do we find the parameters for those scans? Right in the search. I'm sorry, I, I thought you saw that, Chuck. The ones that worked best with the best return is this criteria set right here. It's as simple as that. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. You've got it at your fingertips. The weekly bull puts looking two weeks out in time, those technical indicators, 85 probability or above, strike prices of $2 or more. That's what worked best over the time horizon of 2015 to now. It's still outperforming all through 2019. Um, sorry, I know you guys can hear that as I'm thumping on my table. I'm going to try to find something real quick. I just paused the screen. And, oh, sorry, I want to go here real quick. So you should be paused on the screen. I'm just making sure you're paused. There we go. This is full screen monitor two. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, let me make sure. All right. So some of you have seen something similar to this before. There's also more of this done in the testing. This is part of that product I mentioned. This is part of module three, section three of taking the bull out of bull put credit spreads. Um, over the course of 2018, where six months were negative. And yes, this includes doing bull puts. Can I go back one? Hold on. Ah, no. This includes doing bull puts through October, November, and December, down to December 26th. So the ending return for 2018, following the trading plan we have with the Power Options default search that I just showed you, was in a $100,000 account, three trades open per cycle, the ending portfolio is at $114,000. Now that only sounds like a 14.8% return, and I'd agree with you it is, because we only allocated 20%, which is the max we would do, 
into the testing, meaning only $20,000 was used in bowl put spreads on a $100,000 account, and we still gained $14,811 in testing off of a $20,000 investment, 74% return. 83% win ratio, average win on the winners was 14.9%. We used triggers, we didn't manage every position, we just used triggers, this was a 51% loss of the losers, meaning if you had a two point spread, the position was closed for a one point loss. Okay, and you're probably making 20 to 30 cents, maybe a little bit more, well around 25 cents, uh, 30 cents for the 15, 14% return on the positions. And a total number of trades is listed here as well. That same search I just showed you, but taking out all the stock criteria, same numbers, same time frame, same allocation, ended up in a 30% loss in the portfolio at the end of 2018. Looking for positions, and you've heard me say this before and we've shown examples, but looking for bull put credit spreads consistently that had a 70 to 75% probability instead of the 85 we look for, would have been a loss at 17%, same time frame, same allocation, same general stock criteria, but looking for the higher probability would have ended up in a loss. And why are these losses here so big? Well, even when the trigger is hit to close at 50, no stock criteria means you're entering in more volatile stocks. So when there is a swing down and that 50% loss is triggered, guess what? It's already blown through that and you get what the market is at the open, meaning you're already at near full loss. Why is this one at 74%? Because you started almost two strikes closer to the stock price. So when there is that bump, February 5th through 9th, August 21st, I'm sorry, March 21st through April 5th of 2018, you're going almost through both strike prices. Whereas here, you're probably only halfway through. The losses are more controlled. Same time frame, same criteria. Stocks, fundamentals, technicals, and more. But picking spreads that are one strike or less for lower margin did not have a high as a return, but did have a successful trading record. You just didn't get as high as a return. Why again? Because when you're one strike apart, and you hit these headline news dips, you end up going through both strike prices and taking near full loss, whereas here you're only at a 50% loss. The losses add up faster. The win ratio is higher, but the loss ratio on the one point spreads is higher because you're through those much faster. Forcing it one week out instead of two, looking for the weekly spreads that would only offer maybe an eight or nine cent net credit with the criteria we were looking for, about half of the return as what we use on power options. So this is some of the testing that we did. We've also done it over three years with the same results. We've compared it against doing just spreads against SPY, uh, spreads on NDX, uh, doing spreads on dividend paying stocks, a high market cap stocks. But as you can see, even in 2018, where six out of the 12 months were negative, this was December 26, remember, the bottom was at December 26. But during this whole time frame, even trading the bull puts on power options still would have resulted in a positive 14.8% return, even allocating only 20% of your total portfolio to the strategy. One of the main reasons why is this. Sure, two out of three spreads were probably, actually three spreads were closed on February 5th through 9th for a loss. That's discussed in the, the product as well. Some were closed here for a loss. That's discussed also. This whole time period is almost seven months, 95, 8, 98% winners, and then October hit. I personally stopped trading on October 12th. I stopped doing bull put credit spreads on October 12th until the next year. But even if you'd kept trading and following the trading plan that's discussed in that product of the bull put credit spreads, you still would have had a profitable year. More than doing one point spreads, more than doing one week out spreads with our testing, absolutely doing no stock criteria and even more of a return than looking for what happens you know if I'm looking for an 85 percent probability spread two weeks out with the potential for a 15 percent return for example that sounds great does look great but you say oh I want a better return if I go down to the 70 to 75 percent probability I'm looking to make an average win of double that my average winners are going to be 31.2 percent yeah, but you're only right 73% of the time, which is in the target, 
but long term it doesn't pan out. And if you started to manage this more, meaning that you started to close things earlier so you avoid the 74% loss, you start closing if you hit a 30% trigger, 40% trigger, guess what? This drops down to about 62% winners. You will not be successful even with a 30% return in that case. You can't do it. That's the nature of spread trades. So you, you, we looked at the tools. We talked about the tools. We talked about the criteria, uh, for example, that uh, uh, David asked about. Do we look for patterns? Do we look for things like that? No, but we have this powerful search tool. We have this knowledge. So what do we do with this powerful search tool and this knowledge? Ernie and I test. We test a lot. We do test every year to make sure we're doing the right thing, that things are still working in this market. And consistently what's worked best is what you already see in the default searches. My preferred one's weekly bull puts. This is how the picks of the day. The naked put and covered call picks of the day came about on power options because Ernie did extensive testing to find which criteria in this strategy perform best. Over a hundred different iterations of stock criteria, option criteria, one-year testing, two-year testing, and more going forward, what worked best. And that's why those are there. That's why they're available for you on power options um, as well. So that's, that's what we're looking at, Chuck, there. That's where they are. Just go right into the search, and you'll see them listed for you, the ones that we back tested. And we do back test the other ones, too. Let me go back a second. So what we also do from time to time in every year is we also test these other defaults, initial values. We'll put the, last week we discussed how these ones here are not my personal searches. These are created on the webinars to show investors how to use the tools. Everything you see here with a double asterisk is a default. We go back and check these to make sure these are mostly monthlies, right, 30 days out in time for credit spreads, condors, and more. And we see initial values or bull put number one, uh, bear call number one, for example. Those are looking 30 days out of time. But we still test those to make sure they're still profitable over longer time horizons. And if they're not, if we feel the market's changed enough or that's no longer successful, we will make changes to what's working currently and then review it again. Uh, it's not available here, but um, one of the things we did recently, as some of you may have seen, Blueprint owners, Radioactive Traders, uh, Fusion subscribers at RadioactiveTrading.com, uh, I did a recent webinar, well it wasn't recent anymore, but earlier this year I did a webinar on trusting the search results. And it was sort of the same approach as that one section I just showed you on the bull put spreads and what Ernie and, and I do on a consistent basis here. Help if I use the right email, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, David, in any, I'm sorry Chuck, in any case, what we're talking about there is we did a very similar thing with the radioactive default screens to see how the um, Stocks that match the radioactive trading criteria would have performed against other searches. There we go. Okay, sorry. So I'm, I'm on my radioactive trading account. I'm in the Blueprint and Fusion section for Blueprint owners and Fusion subscribers. If you're just a Blueprint owner, it's here too. Click on Blueprint owner only webinars. This latest video on Trust the Power Options stock search walked through exactly that kind of analysis, taking the married put screen and saying, um, I apologize, taking the married put search criteria we use and then saying, okay, if we took the same married put structure but just did it on S&P 500 stocks, NASDAQ stocks, stocks with this technical indicator or not, and we saw how those performed over a one-year and two-year period, guess which one won? Don't have to tell you, but the information is there. We do these tests all the time, certain checkpoints we have listed to make sure that we're still posting search criteria that's available. All right. All right, so uh, if you do have any last minute questions, we can go ahead and send those in. But uh, I just wanted to mention everyone, today's thoughts are my thoughts on your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions or recommendations. I can state my concerns. On Don's approach, I can state uh, what criteria that I would use, what strategies I like, what strategies settings I know have worked through exhaustive and extensive testing as well, and my preferred strategies, but nothing is a direct recommendation. Fusion subscribers will likely see, finally, a new married put position from me on Ally next week, as well as one of the others I saw in there, depending on what happens on Monday as well. 
All right, let's see here. Um, sorry, I did have another comment come in. I just wanted two other comments come in. Okay. Oh, Nate said that's very helpful. Uh, Chuck says, uh, as you can imagine, 55 years of trading, I've seen a lot of trading-related software. Power Options surely is in my top five. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Um, that is excellent to hear. Uh, uh, Nancy does say, any update on Robinhood? No. I know they're allowing options trading now. I know we emailed them to ask about their API and a link to Power Options through their API interfaces, uh, but we have not heard back from them. I think they're still, I don't want to say bogged down, but I think they're still doing a lot of work on enhancing the rest of their tools for more option strategies availability uh, also right now. Uh, and I've emailed, I always say it wrong, Nancy, you know it better than I do. Tasty Works, I guess, is the trading arm of Tasty Trade. I've emailed them as well uh, for potential discussion on uh, linking trades through Power Options, and I think I'm emailing the wrong contact because I haven't heard anything back after uh, three or four months. All right. So anyway, if you like the tools you saw today, you saw the searches, we talked about how the search criteria are set up to be beneficial, and they're tested, so you can go forth with confidence looking at our default searches, but really you want to make your own changes so that it's what matches your preference. We also showed the portfolio today and the rollout opportunities that are done for you to help you save time. But if you haven't taken a look at Power Options yet, just go to PowerOps.com. Put in your name and email address, and it'll give you full access to a 14-day free trial with all of the tools, including some of the historical backtesting tools. And uh, you don't need a credit card or anything. There's no risk of being billed. At the end of 14 days, the trial just ends. You have full access for 14 days. After that, our subscription levels start at $45 per month for the end of day data. We have a variety of different services using delayed data, 15 to 20 minute delayed data, even when we offer real time service, and of course the back testing tools and services as well. Other free education, well, we talked about the webinars that are available, eight ways to manage the bull put spread. You can find that at powerop.com slash webinars.asp or just under the free webinars tab on Power Options. Also check out the blog, and of course a lot of our archived videos, the Friday sessions and others, are available, excuse me, are available to the public on YouTube um, under User Power Options as well. All right, well I didn't see any last minute comments come in. I want to thank you all for your questions. Uh, Don, David, Chuck, Sam, it was good to see you here today. Uh, Nancy, it's good to hear back from you again. I'll get you more information on 13 and 14 as soon as I have it, and I'll get you on uh, that Facebook group there so that you can uh, more easily access some of the recordings um, for the Blueprint owners that are available. But if anyone thinks of any questions later on, you can send me an email at any time to support at powerop.com or support at RadioactiveTrading.com. You can also call us during market hours, 302-992-7971. And if you're on a trial, or if you're a paid subscriber, of course, but even if you're just on a trial, remember, you can just click the free coaching session link. You can schedule a coaching session at any time. And the coaching session, again, is a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie, walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions that you have. It's not a sales call. It's really just what we did today. We sort of I sort of sell the use of the tools by showing you how powerful it is and how I use it every day and how I'd use it to answer all of your questions. Um, because it's not a hard sell at all. It's really trying to get you as comfortable as you can with the Power Options search tools, with the options strategies as well, so you have confidence to continue trading and continue to be successful. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next week, our uh, start of October. 2019 here, last of three months of 2019. So let's get some good trades in and let's see, uh, get some good profits before the end. Take care, everyone. Good night.